All this week, I'm going to be bringing you a few more smeller like fragrances from the Middle East. And in today's episode, I'm starting off with this one by Ard Al Zafaran. This is called Tafakar, and you'll already know by the thumbnail that it bears a striking resemblance to Carlisle by Parfums de Mali. So to find out how accurate this is to Carlisle and where you can pick up a bottle for around about 15 quid, then stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. Yes, hello again and welcome to this latest episode of Mags Frags, where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul and today's scent of the day is Tafakar uh, by Ad Al Zafaran, uh, which is a woody oriental amber fragrance for men and it comes in an eau de parfum concentration. It's a 100ml bottle size and I picked this one up from a, a website called EA Distribution for just £14.99 but it's also priced around about the £20 mark on eBay and I have actually seen it as low as like £13 something on other sites so it is readily available at online retailers and I've got to say that the, for the price it's an absolute bargain considering uh, a similar size bottle of Carlisle is going to set you back around about £275. Okay, so into the presentation, and it comes in a, a really nice quality uh, textured box in like a metallic br brown and gold colourway. On the front is the name of the fragrance in both English and what I presume to be Arabic, and then down at the bottom is the size and also the concentration. These, uh, there's a gold band that runs all the way around all four sides of the box and it features some intricate embossed detailing. Uh, at the top there's uh, the Ardal Zafaran logo uh, which is also printed in a metallic gold. Around the back um, there's the name repeated as well as the usual sticker of authenticity. Finally down at the bottom is where you'll find the uh, the barcode and also the batch code and the batch code on the, this particular one is 0201734 on this particular one and it's also date stamped with a production date of March 2020. The bottle comes in a very weighty textured glass design uh, with this like diamond cut shape detailing uh, on, the, on the top and the bottom. Uh, I do like the fact that it's a translucent bottle and you can actually see the level of the juice when you hold it up to the light. Again, there's a, a gold band that wraps around the middle of the bottle with the uh, name of the fragrance on the front and some more decorative swirl detailing on the sides. The cap is plastic and it slides over the atomizer but it doesn't actually click into place and it comes off way too easily for my liking. Again, there's uh, lots more bling on the cap, and even though it, this overall feels uh, pretty well made, it's not the most attractive bottle design in my opinion. The uh, the spray quality is decent enough, uh, and it gives a nice uh, fine mist of spray, and I'd say it's definitely a uh, decent enough presentation for the £15 that you'd pay for it, and I don't think I'd even be that disappointed if, uh, if this was double the amount. Okay, so the top notes in this are bergamot, nutmeg, rose and jasmine. In the heart we've got prunes, incense, cumin and sandalwood. And the base notes in this are vanilla, oud and amber. Okay, so this one opens up with almost the identical tart green apple accord that you get in Carlisle. And within the uh, first two or three seconds after you first sprayed it, you won't fail to recognise it. However, according to the retailers that sell this one, none of them actually list apple as a, an official note. But to my nose, you still do get tons of it in the opening. And I'd struggle to tell this and the Parfums Mali version apart if I did it like a blindfolded side-by-side -side test. However, I would say that the opening of this is slightly more loud and in your face, whereas the Parfums de Mali version is slightly softer smelling, with a, a touch more smoothness, it's kind of a bit more smoothly blended. This uh, slightly sour fruity blaster uh, from the initial spray is pretty short lived, and it's not long before it transforms into a warm and sweet aroma once the combination of vanilla, prunes and amber come through. 
There are other notes in this like nutmeg and cumin that add a hint of spice and also some rose and jasmine that bring some velvety smoothness to the heart of the scent. But for me, this scent DNA will always remind me of smelling like a warm apple pie in a, a bakery during winter time and I can't think of a, a better way to describe it really. It's uh, savoury sweet rather than being sickly sweet and it has a real warm and comforting, uh, almost festive like aroma. You do get a tiny bit of woodiness in the far dry down that obviously isn't real oud, uh, but it does bring like an oud-like Middle Eastern quality to the base of the fragrance. It's uh, blended very well and if you are familiar with how Carlisle smells then you'll be very impressed with how close this one smells to the uh, original, especially in the opening few minutes, which is quite rare for a Middle Eastern uh, clone. Usually they're a touch more harsh and uh, synth synthetic smelling after the initial spray, but this one it's really smooth instantly and it really lets you know what it's inspired by uh, within the first couple of seconds. This is a warm comforting scent that's ideal for the autumn and winter seasons if you're planning on wearing it during the day, but it's also fine to wear all year round as a, a night out fragrance. It produces a relaxing aroma that would be great for a, like a date night or if you're going out to a dressed up formal event, but it's not really one I'd recommend for younger guys to wear as a clubbing scent. It's even great to wear casually at home if you're uh, like lounging around in front of the TV, which uh, I'd never do with my original by the way, but when you've only paid uh, £15 for it, it's, it's not that much of a problem. The main area that this differs from Carlisle is in its performance. This starts out really big and bold and it kind of tricks you into believing that it's Carlisle on steroids and everything seems to be just amped up from the initial spray. But give it 15 or 20 minutes or so to settle down and it just seems to burn itself out a little bit and the apple nut disappears and you're kind of just left with a soft vanilla with a bit of woodiness, whereas the original retains all the other elements like the fruitiness and the florals and the spices for way longer. I'm not going to insult you by saying that this £15 fragrance performs like a £275 original uh, and after about an hour or so this is uh, no longer recognisable as Carlisle. It's mainly in the opening that you get the biggest comparison, but having said that, the first hour of this is probably the most accurate copy of Carlisle that I've uh, come across so far. It's not a weak fragrance and it will linger around for a few hours, uh, but it just doesn't maintain its resemblance of Carlisle and it takes on a, kind of a bit of a different character the further the, in, into the dry down that you get. So you might want to uh, carry a little 5ml decant, decant around with you so that you can give yourself a, a few top up sprays every hour or two uh, if you do want to keep projecting that Parfums de Mali scent DNA. Yeah, this is a great value fragrance for the price that you pay for it and under £15 you can't, you simply can't go wrong. You get an expensive niche fragrance experience at a fraction of the cost. The packaging and presentation is decent enough and there's uh, no doubt uh, what this is meant to be inspired by. But unfortunately the ingredients and the blend quality aren't quite there uh, in the dry down and the original outshines this one after about the hour mark. But nevertheless, it still smells amazing and it's well worth the money if you uh, are on a tight budget. However, for an extra fiver, you can pick up a 30ml extract spray from the perfume parlour and that one's called Pennine, which is also a copy of Carlisle. And in my opinion, it does uh, a much better job at retaining that Carlisle DNA for longer. And I'd even go as far as to say that the, the one from the perfume parlour even outlasts the original, it's super powerful. It's definitely the uh, best clone of Carlisle that I've smelled personally, but obviously uh, you pay a bigger price per milliliter for it. I can't tell uh, any difference between this and the original in the opening, and uh, if you don't mind uh, not having total accuracy, it's definitely well worth picking up. Okay, so that's about it for this latest episode, but don't forget I'll be posting new content every day uh, for the next 7-10 to 10 days, bringing you a different Middle Eastern fragrance each day uh, that smells similar to much more expensive scents. And as always, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to also subscribe to the channel. It's also great to hear your opinions, your thoughts and your critiques and all of the fragrances that feature in these reviews, uh, so don't forget to keep your comments coming down in the comments section. 
So once again, thank you very much uh, for tuning into this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye-bye for now.